Some of them went to the harbor, where they could watch another kind of exchange, lend-lease. Bauxite, needed to make aluminum for planes, is brought by ship and barge from Dutch Guiana, more than 2,000 miles away. Here it's loaded onto lake steamers and sent to Canada. At the next pier, a Canadian ship brings in a cargo of newsprint for America's press. She'll go back with a hold full of bauxite. Lend lease in action between two of the United Nations. Sunday Mass, and the Polish seamen met some Americans of Polish descent. They had much in common. The priest even found that he and Lieutenant Miswakowski came from the same village in Poland. Alf Einung stayed at the Swetlands, and he and Elizabeth spent Sunday on bicycles. Alpha thought all Americans drove automobiles. He hadn't heard about gasoline rationing. It's thirsty work for a sailor, and it was good to stop a moment at the Benson farm and say hello to Sally. She and Elizabeth went to school together. Sunday also meant a swim in the lake. The United Nations were old friends by now. For the big week, a carnival was arranged. With all the trimmings, and all the thrills. But it wasn't all play. There were simpler things just living together day by day. Breakfast in the Duda kitchen and a chance to talk quietly. To learn to know each other, each day finding new things to talk about. as a true Frenchman, could start a little discussion about salad dressings with his host. And as a fighting man, he could find a kindred soul to discuss more serious things, such as the model planes young Willard was making for the Army and Navy. Models to scale to help our airmen identify any plane that flies. He and Jean got together on technical matters. Martin Broughton and Dr. Swetman spent hours together, talking about what sort of world this will be and what we can make it together after the war is won. a chance to think, 
and write letters as if you were at home. To be lazy if you felt like it. And wake up to find you had some new friends. The week was nearly over when the mayor gave an informal dinner for the men. They were old friends now, and under the laughter there was a new understanding. Foreign countries no longer seemed strange or distant. Not Britain, Greece, France, and Norway, but Steve, Jean, Alf, and Martin. Friends sitting around a table. Goodbyes were various and fervent and sad, as all goodbyes are. But they finally had to go. They had to go to make the image of peace and friendliness come true, to finish the war. But as they left, they remembered, and the people of Oswego remembered, and better understood their pledge of the United Nations. We affirm our faith in the four freedoms essential to human happiness. We dedicate ourselves to that collaboration among men and nations that will establish security and lasting peace for all the peoples of the world.